as a 16th century Spanish soldier, John gave up religion and led a wild life. When he left the military at age 40, he became a shepherd. John decided to make a radical conversion. Despite a life full of tragedy, compounded by poor choices, St. John of God accepted God's immense love for him and chose to express his gratitude by caring for the sick and mentally ill. His compassion inspired others to join him, and the Brothers Hospitallers was founded in 1572. The order now maintains a presence in 53 countries, operating more than 300 hospitals. The Catholic Church celebrates the extraordinary life of St. John of God on March 8th. Let's learn the story of this saint today. He was born Jo Duarte Cidade in 1495 near Evora, Portugal, in Monte Moro Novo, a small city halfway up the road from Lisbon to Spain. He was born into a once prominent family that became poor, but had great faith. At eight years old, John heard a visiting priest speak of adventures that were waiting with the new worlds being opened up. That very night, he ran away from home to travel with the priest and never saw his parents again. They begged their way from village to village he had nothing or no one to care for him. But one day, the boy fell sick. The farmer who lived nearby found him on the streets and took pity on him. He nursed the boy back to health and eventually grew so fond of him that he decided to adopt John. John worked as a shepherd in the mountains for many years until he was 27. The farmer was pleased with his strength and work ethics and offered to have him marry his daughter and become heir to the property. But John loved the woman as his sister and didn't want to marry her. Then an opportunity came along for him to join the army of the Holy Emperor. Charles V. For the next 18 years, John lived and fought among the emperor's foot soldiers, first against the French and later the Turks. As a soldier, he was hardly a model of holiness, taking part in the gambling, drinking, and pillaging that his comrades enjoyed. John's conscience was occasionally troubled, particularly by the memories of his early years before he was taken from his parents. Despite falling into a lifestyle of violence and plundering, he had a certain weakness for those who were poor or in extreme distress and would give alms to them. He was narrowly saved on two occasions from what seemed like certain death. One day, he was thrown from a horse near the French lines in the enemy territory. Afraid that he would be captured or killed, he vowed on impulse to change his life if he got back to the Spanish camp alive. On another occasion, he was sent to guard an enormous heap of treasures. But soon, much of the treasure was stolen. Suspicion fell on John. He was condemned to be shot, but an officer intervened to win his pardon. Following these dramatic events, John decided to amend his life. His comrades didn't mind so much that John was repenting, but hated that he wanted them to give up their pleasures too. When his regiment was disbanded, 
he decided to go on a pilgrimage along the way of St. James. There, he confessed his sins and committed himself to living a life of repentance. Soon after this, he returned to Portugal and discovered what had become of his parents. His mother had died brokenhearted after the loss of her son after which his father had become a Franciscan monk. He begged his way back to his foster home, where he worked as a shepherd again. As a shepherd, he had plenty of time to contemplate what God might want for his life. He was committed to living out the faith in God that he had regained. He traveled briefly to North Africa, seeking to help enslaved Christians. After two years, he returned to Spain. In Spain, he spent his days unloading ship cargoes and his nights visiting churches and reading spiritual books. Reading gave him so much pleasure that he decided that he should share this joy with others. He quit his job and became a book peddler, traveling from town to town, selling religious books and holy cards. It was during this period of John's life that he is said to have been granted the vision of the infant Jesus who bestowed on him the name by which he was later known, John of God. The vision also told him to move to Grenada and set up a shop there. John was now happy and content. He was quite popular in that area. It was during this time that St. John of Avila arrived in town. Upon hearing a sermon on repentance from the famous preacher St. John of Avila, John felt overcome by the thought of his sins. He rushed back to his shop, tore up any secular books that he had, and gave away all his religious books and all of his money. People thought the little bookseller had gone mad as he ran about town weeping in torn clothes. They took pity upon him, bringing him to the hospital where the insane were put away for treatment. John suffered the standard treatment of the time, being tied down and daily whipping. Saint John of Avila came to visit there and told him his penance had gone on long enough. He told John to be more actively involved in tending to the needs of others rather than enduring personal hardships. John gained peace of heart and left the hospital to begin working among the poor. He rented a house near Grenada where those who were lepers, lame, mentally ill, paralyzed, and deaf found shelter. The house became a combined hospital and homeless shelter, run entirely by John himself. At first, John begged for money to support those in need, but soon people volunteered to help. Throughout his life, he was criticized by people who didn't like the fact that his impulsive love embraced anyone in need without asking for credentials or character witnesses. Yet, his impulsive wish to help saved many people in one emergency. Once, there was a huge fire at the Royal Hospital. When John saw the fire and reached the location, he found that the crowd was just standing around, watching the hospital and its patients go up in flames. Without thinking much, John ran into the hospital building. One by one, he helped carry or lead the patients to safety. When all the patients were rescued, he started throwing blankets, sheets, 
and mattresses out the windows. How well he knew from his own hard work how important these things were. Suddenly, he fell through the roof, and the people were aghast. All thought they had lost their hero, until John of God appeared miraculously out of smoke. This is the reason why St. John of God is the patron of firefighters. The Bishop of Grenada approved his work and gave him the name John of God. John served the sick and poor for 15 years before meeting his death through an act of charity. He jumped into a freezing river and managed to save a drowning man. But he returned home shivering and weakened from the ordeal. He had caught pneumonia. He lay down in one of his own hospital beds, where his condition further declined. The Bishop of Grenada came to administer the last rites. As the bishop prepared him for death, John, asked to be alone, and summoned his last strength to rise from bed and kneel before a crucifix. He died in prayer with his face pressed against the altar on the night of March 7, 1550. In some saints, there is a fine line between sanctity and madness. St. John of God straddled that fine line. He became mad for the Lord and was canonized by the church for his holy madness in serving the poor and the God who loves them. St. John of God, help us to act out of love as soon as we feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Help us learn to fight the little voices in our heads and hearts that give us all sorts of practical reasons to wait or delay in our service to God. Amen.